Yeah. All right, so we at the Going Solo Conference Hello. with Laura Fiton and also called Pistachio, right? Yes. Because um, which I evidently can't pronounce right, but you guys pronounce yeah? it much better in Europe. Pistachio. Pistachio. So you it's super famous on Twitter, right? <laughs> <laughs> Worldwide famous. Well, there's a claim to fame. Yeah. I'm a celebrity, and I'm not even that. Aren't you? No. No. <laughs> but uh, I mean, you, you, you're talking about like you really like Twitter and you think there's a huge future in it. Do you I'm think? a little oversubscribed to the Kool Aid on that one. Yeah. So it's totally like uh, some people you say um, they write blog posts where they say they don't understand Twitter. Yes. Yes. And I have written. You have blog written posts that. Where I don't understand yeah. Twitter. I think and it's important to go through that phase. So so do you think that they will all understand it at some point, or everybody will understand it, or do you think Twitter will evolve to into something else, or? I think its adoption rate will end up, not Twitter per se, but something that accomplishes all the same goals and all the same outcomes. Well, the adoption rate will probably be somewhere between IM and email, where email is extremely widespread, and IM is very widespread, but it's not like everybody's mom and everybody's dad and everybody's uncle does IM. So, uh, so if you were like uh, the boss at, at Google or that, you know, they have Jaiku and, sure. and you, you want to tell them what they should do to make it better. If, uh, do you have some suggestion? Well, I haven't played enough with Jaiku to know. Um, I'm certainly fascinated that as far as I know, no company, um, to my knowledge, can I qualify that more, right? is building a white label version that can be secured in the enterprise and meet specific enterprise needs on data storage, regulatory compliance, protecting things within the firewall and the kinds of things, and yet enable the collaborative and mentoring and organizational flattening experience of a Twitter. So that's, is that one of the things you're working on, to, to make it work for business? Like I, to I'm make very them use Twitter, right? To see, yes, how it can be adopted, what it can be used for, because again, referring back to email and IM, when it first came out, people didn't really know what it was. They didn't know what they would end up using it for, and the more they used it, the more uses they found for it. And I really see Twitter has happened the same way in my life, and has opened up tremendous like worlds of possibility to me. So I think even if, if a fraction of my experience translates over to a lot of other people, that there's a huge upside there that we can explore. Yeah, so um, so you were on the podcast uh, recently uh, uh, with Dan Dan Gilmore, Steve G Gilmore. Steve Gilmore, yep. sorry. Yep. So uh, do you just want to say something about uh, what you think about him because he's a big uh, Twitter guy, right? Sure. He's sure. one of the big ones. Well, he, he's gotten very into it. I, I don't think I, I think he's coming fairly recently to it. Uh, I could be wrong. Um, like within you know five months or so. Yeah. Um, I absolutely am a big fan of what he now calls the Gilmore Gang again. For a while he couldn't call it that. And I like to call in and listen and, and it's some really smart people talking about things I care about. So I was absolutely flabbergasted one day when he patched me through and made me start answering questions and had a great time. I'd love to speak again there anytime. All right. So uh, just one last last thing. Um, do you think that, that more and more people are getting to be freelance and it's, is it something that's really nice, really, I mean, it's cool compared to a life where you have to have a boss and... and well, I, I think Stowe was very right in being even-handed about it and saying, sure, there's all these great advantages, but there are a lot of disadvantages too. That said, I think we are going to see in the future of the employment workforce, certainly in the U.S., I'm less educated on how it's going here in Europe, um, but this sense that people will kind of move from project to project, and I've heard this turtling idea, like they're a turtle, like they carry on their back their benefits and some of the other ancillary things that are usually tied only to a job. Um, I think that's a pretty natural outcome of mobility in the workforce, uncertainty in long-term employment, layoffs, and people's tendency to want to experiment with freelance. I think there'll be kind of a hybrid mashup model of that. That uh, the thing they're doing in Leeds, it'd be nice they do it everywhere, where they ha you have this Co-working co uh, co co is a huge yeah. trend, and if you're curious learning more, I highly recommend Tara Hunt, T-A-R-A-H-U-N-T. Her blog is called Horse Pig Cow. You can Google her. And she's written a lot of blog posts and really led in the co-working movement to help bring it to other cities. Right. Thanks. Thank Thanks you.